In the American West, no populist figure was more revered than Cesar Chavez. Chavez, an itinerant farm worker with a seventh grade education, founded and led the United Farm Workers Union. In the 1960s, Chavez led the legendary Delano Grape Strike, which lasted for five years and inspired college students across the country to wear boycott grapes pins. Chavez's signature rallying cry, Si se puede, yes we can, became so famous among well-educated liberals that Barack Obama used it as a campaign slogan when he ran for president. Growing up in California, I can't remember a year when we didn't celebrate the life and achievements of Cesar Chavez in class. Chavez's name is still everywhere in the state. There are six libraries, 11 parks, half a dozen major roads, at least 25 public schools named in California after him, more than George Washington. That doesn't include the many Cesar Chavez academic buildings, student centers, and at least one college. Cesar Chavez Day is a California state holiday. Most enduring is Chavez's Si Se Puede. Whenever left-wing demonstrators gather, you will hear it. It's most common at pro-immigration rallies. Several times I've seen illegal aliens scream it while carrying Mexican flags. Every time I say a silent prayer of thanks that Cesar Chavez is long dead. It would have been torture for him. Cesar Chavez didn't support illegal aliens. Chavez didn't like immigration at all, generally, especially the low-skilled kind. Chavez understood that new arrivals from poor countries will always work for less than Americans. Immigration hurt the members of his union, undercutting their wages and weakening their leverage in negotiations with management. Cesar Chavez believed in vigilantly defended borders. When government refused to protect them, Chavez did it himself. In the early 1960s, Chavez fought the federal Bracero program, which gave farmers permission to import hundreds of thousands of seasonal workers from Mexico to pick crops. Growers loved the program because it lowered their labor costs. Chavez hated it for the same reason. Congress killed the Bracero program in 1964, after which Chavez turned his sights on illegal aliens, or as he called them, wetbacks. In 1969, Chavez led a march down the agricultural spine of California to protest the hiring of illegal workers by growers. Marching alongside him were future presidential candidate Walter Mondale and the Reverend Ralph Abernathy, longtime aide to Martin Luther King. By 1972, the problem of illegal labor streaming over the border had worsened. In an interview with a San Francisco television station, Chavez railed against the, quote, wetbacks and illegal immigrants from Mexico who were threatening his workers. As he said, as long as we have a poor country bordering California, it's going to be very difficult to win strikes. When the U.S. government failed to secure the border, Chavez's unionized fruit pickers acted unilaterally. In the winter of 1979, UFW members, almost all of them Hispanic, began intercepting Mexican nationals as they crossed the border and assaulted them in the desert. Their tactics were brutal. Chavez's men beat the immigrants with chains, clubs, and whips made of barbed wire. Illegal aliens who dared work as scabs had their houses bombed and their cars burned. The union paid Mexican officials to keep quiet. In an interview at the New York Times, Yuma County Sheriff Travis Yancey recalled watching as the UFW men set up what they called a wet line, a hundred miles of military tents along the Arizona-Mexico border. Quote, each tent was manned by five or six of their people who were paid five to seven dollars a day, plus their grub, said Yancey. They'd catch any wet coming through and beat the hell out of them. Chavez didn't deny any of this. Yes, there was a union wet line along the border, he said. It cost us a lot of money and we stopped a lot of illegals. At one union meeting, which was tape recorded, a UFW official confronted Chavez about using the terms illegals and wetbacks. Chavez responded angrily. No, a spade's a spade, he said. You guys get these hangups. God damn it, how do we build a union? They're wets, you know, they're wets, and let's go after them. Chavez was blunter than most, but his views weren't unusual in the American labor movement. Union leaders had opposed mass immigration since the 1860s.